The Rubik's Cube. Originally starting out as a 3x3, three by, three, by 3, it was considered an extremely difficult puzzle. Well, they solved it. And now, the Rubik's Company has developed the Rubik's Revenge and Professor Cube. Now, the Rubik's Revenge is a 4x4x4, four by four by four, and the Professor Cube is a 5x5x5. Five by five by five. There is also a 6x6x6 by six by six and a 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven in production. Um, these cubes in particular are not Rubik's brand, they are East Chain brand. The Rubik's brand sucks in comparison. Uh, the pieces pop off, uh, the stickers peel, they're not extremely smooth. They suck. Do not buy Rubik's brand unless you like throwing away your money. They're expensive and they suck. The East Sheen brand are relatively inexpensive. You can get them on eBay from Husky Omega. Uh, I got the 4x4, 5x5, and a 2x2 for $40, including shipping and handling, uh, which is all the way for China. So it's really not that bad. Now, this tutorial is not about the 5x5. It's about the 4x4. You can solve the 4x4 just like a 3x3 three three with the 3x3 three three reduction method. I don't like this method. It gives you a case of parity. Uh, one of the cases of parity includes uh, these two edges being switched. Um, and I absolutely hate it. But anyway, I'm going to start mixing this up and I'm going to show you my method. I call it a cage reduction method because it uses both the reduction, the 3x3 reduction, as well as the cage method. Alright, so to start off, you're going to want to put the centers together. Now, one thing to note is that. 4x4 four four is just like the 5x5. Five five. Centers are fixed on a 5x5. Five five. They are not on a 4x4. Four four. So it helps if you know the orientation of the centers first. White opposite yellow, red opposite purple, blue opposite green. If you do not, use the corners. White, purple, blue. And you can find a white blue corner. Uh, here we go. White blue. So it would be white, blue, red. So now you know that red is opposite purple due to the color of that. So let's uh, start putting this thing together. The first thing you want to do is make a 2x2 two two, or a 2x1 square, rectangle, whatever. You're just going to make those little blocks for the white, but you also want to note that you don't want to mix up the ones that you've already done. So notice that this is mostly intuitive. Um, there's not a lot of algorithms for putting the centers together. There's a couple, but they're very simple, very easy to do. Uh, once you have your first center done, you're going to want to do the opposite side. So put it down and go to the opposite side. We know that this is yellow. This does not have any yellows on the top. So that's a fortunate thing. But sometimes you will have a case where yellow is on the top. Like that. You don't want this. Put all of your yellows on the bottom. That's the first step. So hold it so that it's like this facing you, and the top side is not going to have any yellows in it, and perform this algorithm. L prime star 2u L star, and that will bring it up and move it out of the way. Now you can do the same thing if it's on the right hand side. 
um, and just bring it up that way. Doesn't really matter. So we're going to put this on our left hand side or on the bottom and just put together our little 2 by 1 blocks. Once you have one 2 by 1 block, put it up here. Using that same algorithm that we just did, L prime star 2u L star. Okay, and put uh, the other 2 by 1 block together. And now what we want to do in order to move this up is to replace so yellow onto yellow. If we don't do that and we perform the algorithm, it's just going to pull the other center part down. So you make sure that you are replacing. Okay, so that's two opposite centers. Move them like so. Okay, you have this part done, this part done. Move it sideways so that it's lengthwise going that way. This is already done. Do the same. And there are no others. Alright, so now you're going to want to continue making those pairs going all the way around. I'm sure that with a little bit of luck and some time, you can figure this all out all on your own. Um, it's not very difficult. When you get a case like this, simply do this. Take it so that one of these two colors, green, purple, will match up. Green matches up with these greens. And simply switch the orientation of the purple so that now the purple is on the bottom, green is on the top. Bring it back, and you're all set. Move them out of the way. Now, you want to go back and make sure that you have the centers going to the right place. So, let's find one with white on the top. There you go. White, green, purple. So, white, green, purple. So, we know that this is going to be green, that's going to be purple. white, green, purple. Um, let's find one. Alright, here we go. White, purple, blue. <clears throat> Excuse me. White, purple, blue. So we know this has to be blue. And there you have it. All of the centers are now solved. Double check that they are all correct. If you get this wrong, then you'll never get the cube. It's very basic. The next step is to solve only one side. So you want to solve the edges for only one side. One. Only one. I'm going to solve for the white. So all of the pieces that have a white, I'm going to match up. Let's start off with the red. You always want it so that the red of one side will match the white of the other, so red, red, white, white. Move it over, this side up, replace it, bring it back down, put it back over. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a fairly simple algorithm. Um, you will need to know this in order to solve any of these. If you do not know this, then you're doomed. Now, you might get a case where you'll have these pieces adjacent to each other. You can perform this simple algorithm. Place them both on the top and perform this. U F U prime L. Now that will move them so that the white is in the proper orientation. Move them over together, up, replace, bring it back down, and fix the centers. Now you're just going to do this for all of them. Make sure that when you solve one uh, go to solve one, you're not messing up another, so just make sure that it's always in the 
upper layer or bottom layer so that it's out of the way. And this is basically what the 3x3 reduction method is. So if you already know the 3x3 reduction method, then you can perform this quite easily. Um, but once we have solved all the edges for one side, we don't have to solve any more edges. One day while I was walking along, I started singing, singing this song, and I hurried home to write the song down, but then I forgot it while fooling.